All right, this next set, numbers 13 through 16. And starting off with number 13, we have Gargantuan Gorilla as well as Swiney Boar. These two are also some powerhouses. A lot of people like these. This Boar is one of my favorite characters. He just looks dope. He just looks dope. Swiney Boar, the names in Japanese, one of the best for him. Wild Thunder. Boom, baby. He is awesome. And you want Bebop? Perhaps we got Gargantuan Gorilla or Banga or Sergeant Bananas. How about that? Let's go over to number 15, Gruesome Gator. Alligatoron, I believe is his name. Super hard to say that one as well. Always trying to remember how to freaking say that correctly. But Leatherhead, shall we say? And then we got Sly Fox number 16 or B Fox, aka Ninjara. From Ninja Turtles if you want to pretend that these are all turtle figures back in the day because your mom didn't buy you the actual size ones. So this card right here when we get to it you can see this is the card we used from before and that's how you would complete those numbers that are not consecutive if you're trying to complete the sets on two packs. Over here though let's get back to this one because the gorilla definitely has some controversy. Now over in Japan I do believe that a black base coat is which what I was trying to explain. A lot of the figures are pressed in a mold for the same base color so they can make them at the same time and then they're like painted differently afterwards is what I believe like happens. So the black base coat in Japan there was a problem with regulations where it wasn't allowed so therefore the base coat this black that you see it would all be red and then they would paint on the black in the arm places. But in America the black base coat would have been allowed so the whole figure would be black and then they would paint the red armor onto it. But the best and most famous uh, variant that a lot of people do like to get is going to be this piece right here. This is the orange suit. Here we go. We got one out of the box that we can show you. This is the orange gorilla weapon and whatnot. All the same on that. This figure would have been how it was released in Japan with the armor would have been the whole base coat would have been orange and then they painted the black over it but these ones are i think they would have released the red one as well in japan he would have came first and this one as you can see the box is different on the single one and it comes and um this came out a little bit later so perhaps this was like a running change they did because of the problems with not being able to use the black base coat all right and getting on to number 15 and 16 gator and Fox, like we showed off before, this is going to be the second of the inconsecutive numbers if you're trying to complete them that way. So Rhino would have came with Fox and uh, Buffalo would have came with the Gator if you wanted to get them. I've never seen these two figures or these two figures together. Uh, they possibly exist, but I do not know. They are Bigfoot out there. So we are going to pretend today as I am missing that piece as mentioned so very very cool gruesome gator he's amazing he's always one of the coolest characters look he's got his little tail how many of them have tails you know not many of them have that extra kind of tail length i think maybe the fish ones do but super super cool i love that he always looked badass again he was kind of like always one of my generals uh he definitely has that look as he's definitely one of the final bosses you got to get through for sure his color scheme amazing absolutely love this character he's one of my favorite love reptiles so of course he would be and then there's sly fox now oh wow there's a tail on it too so that's really cool so maybe that also has something to do with how they are produced possibly coming in the same molds and things like that but in any case there is sly fox very very nice number 16 b fox i love that name that shit is hard as well i don't have um any variants besides the gorilla for this one the sly fox and the gator are pretty much going to be your standard ones unless you get overseas and the colors are very minimum on those as well all right our next group a lot of fantastic fan favorites as well we're looking through number 17 through 20 uh some of my favorites i always remember rubber neck giraffe and hard top tortoise as a kid definitely had that one now starting with this one we got yellow giraffe or black turtle in japan uh the giraffe not too many color variations that they do have but the giraffe is very unique in his height uh, he really over towers pretty much everyone else his design he's one of my favorites i love the yellows and blues and reds they just pop so so good on that moving on to the tortoise 
you know, a lot of customizers like to make him the Ninja Turtles. Right here, we got Half Court, by the way, for making Ninja Turtle characters still. But there are a lot of variations for the Taurus if you're trying to complete him. And uh, just like the Orange Gorilla that we did show off, there is a version of him in Japan that would have been released with the orange base coat painted black such as this one right here this is the japanese box box c this one being more normal you're going to have the u.s black coat painted the orange over top of the black you can also see in this mock one here the orange coloration is also different there are variations in slight differences in the orange as well as well as having this piece we're going to bring up this is my childhood one here we have this black base coat i think with the orange over it um Although it does have a lighter orange as well than even this one. You can see all these oranges are different colors. But the biggest thing about that, if you turn this around to the back, you can see its shell nice and bumpy as a turtle shell should be on that one. But on this one, we do turn it around and we do have a nice little stamp smack dab in the center. You do have your print, you know, with the 86 year, your number and your Hasbro brand that you would see on all the figures, just in a lot smaller writings. They decided to put this one with a nice block on there. So this is a variation that people do look to pick up as well, because you can obviously see there is quite a bit of difference uh, on the design of the back of that figure. I also noticed that we had like... Like, this one's a fire, that one's a, a wood. Like, is there out there a collector who gets w one of each animal, firewood, water, of turtle, firewood, water, of giraffe? That's crazy. I'm sure there's a person out there that collects that way. And then on to, oh man, these figures are really, really amazing. We got Sawtooth Shark and Prickly Porcupine, a.k.a. Hedgehog and Bad Shark. Awesome name on that one as well. Another unpunched card looking nice and crispy on this one very nice always great to see but the porcupine one of my favorite characters who doesn't i mean look how cool looking he is definitely put a lot into the scope and uniqueness of this character the colors on him have always been really cool you have this yellow coloration the same that we have on the package of this one now there is a color variation you can search out that people do like to pick up and that's going to be the mustard variation of the character you can see the yellows are quite different another difference with this character is going to be the sideburns are unpainted on here so uh, there could be a, a full mustard with sideburns painted there's a lot of error uh, paint errors that do happen since the factories and stuff are different so a lot of people do look for those errors and try to collect all the different versions that's why i say it's very subjective there's so there's so many but this is definitely a main variant we do have the japanese boxes for the porcupine and the shark you can see that this box is quite different we're going to the tropical island style this is going to be box g on here uh we're no longer at c we've skipped all the way to g and yes they do have the other letters in between but we're moving into the tropical boxes and that's what i have i am missing the giraffe in this this box to complete those but man sawtooth shark this guy he's always cool his blues are just so sick he just looks sinister if you had like red blood in there uh he'd be really cool there we go rolling through numbers 21 through 24 rounding the bin we're coming to the end of the first 28 figures from series one and just like the previous two packs that we just saw we're back to consecutive numbers so if you're hunting that style this is going to be the card pack for that we got number 21 and 22 danger dog and hair raising rabbit and just like the other ones they are consecutive but they're out of order he should be on that side but it doesn't matter they're japanese names for all of these figures once again are amazing we're talking about bow dog and rabbit kid the western cartoon i never knew i needed till now like it's i didn't see bow dog and the rabbit kid he was up there taking care of the rascals at the gold mine yeah that shit's awesome definitely need that so with danger dog we do have some slight differences in the shades of green this one right here he's got the darker shade but i do have uh one of my childhood ones and he is a lighter shade as you can see it might be kind of hard to see in the camera but next to like those ones, it's a lighter shade of green on his face and there. So you got, dude, they're from the same litter. They're just a little bit darker shade. So a little, little caramel and a, and a little milk chocolate, if you, if you will there. The more unique 
version is going to be this rabbit right here because he does have a few variants that people do go after. I do not have the one for the rabbit, but there is a tall or short rabbit or long or short ear, however you want to look at it. The head on the other one is a little bit smaller and the ears are more curved down. These ones stick up a little bit more. Also, the coloration on here is going to be like more of, um, I think it's a brighter pink on that one but the more unique detail that i find to be the variant is going to be the little tail on the back you got the nub tail and then you got the full tail and luckily on this two pack here we do have a full tail in there i'm seeing if i can get him let's see if i can see it yeah there it is like right there you see that little nub if we put this one like up to it see, it's like a half nub it's like it's like a neutered it's his neutered version so we got the little nub tail full tail that's another tail i think that's number four i am not a rumpus so we got to count that i mean it's it is it's it's cut off but we still going to count it so we got four tails i wonder if that's all of them I wonder, we only have a couple more figures i wonder if we're going to see any more tails that's crazy so very very cool on that uh hair raising rabbit all right rolling with numbers 23 and 24 they are in consecutive order we're talking about seersire horse and war weasel had this pack as a kid this pack itself is actually looking pretty clean we got that unpunch always nice to see but this pack i definitely remember because i love war weasel are you ready for their names in japanese we're talking about blue horse and gaeta one of my favorites i love this figure he's got a gatling gun as a hand he's definitely one of my my top guys I always like played with, but also from the fact that on the card back, there's not too many figures that really stand out because a lot of them are in more of that gray scale, but the Rhino obviously sticks out a lot. You got Bighorn in the front, and then right here on the side, you got Gaeta looking nice with the red popping, so maybe that's why I always thought he was one of like the main characters or whatnot. So also the bat, he just like, he looks so sinister. I know he's grayscale, but that hook, it always like drew my eye in there. So, but anyways, we're talking about war weasel and blue horse right here so very very nice there's not too many variants you can get for the horse unless you're going international have one it's a little bit different shade but american release that's just going to be the common one you're going to get when you get into war weasel there is going to probably be my favorite uh well at least one of my favorite variants in the entire uh, u.s release lines that we did get for series one especially we're talking about pink weasel right here this one is amazing. You can see the two different colorations. Now, this is not a red color. Obviously, it looks more orange. I would say like a burnt orange, if you will. But just like we had showed off earlier with the turtle or the gorilla being made in the black base coat and then switched over to the orange base coat later, Japan had regulations with, I do believe, the red base coat. And so then they had to remake this figure in a pink mold as well as another figure you're going to see coming up on the next round of guys and then you would paint this blue armor on top of the pink base coat this figure as a kid i actually always thought was a skunk because of this oxygen mask i just always thought it was just a different color but there is a skunk that comes out in a later wave but anyway this is one of my favorites so you can get this one in japan he would have came in the single boxes i do believe but in america you would have got him in the north American release of the Battle Chariots, the Bighorn Battle Chariot, to be precise, right there. Uh, and look, this is funny. This one has a uh, seersire horse in there. It's funny enough, we were just talking about you, sir. Now, you could get different characters. Uh, multiple variations were dropped into the package versions of the chariots. I don't think it was every figure, but you definitely had an option to get other ones that were just thrown in there. But if you were looking for the pink war weasel, then you would find him in this chariot. Oh, man, he does look good in that blue, for sure. So otherwise, over in Japan, you would have got him in the G-style tropical boxes. I do not have any of these guys in the Japanese box, missing a bunch for those, but they would have came in the tropical style box. I think it's really funny with that is the fact that uh, in the boxes, as we showed off earlier, you had boxes A and B, which were the Decepticon and Autobots grid style boxes from back then. So this is box G. They made A, B, and then they skipped and made like all the figures from series two and three. And then they decide to print the last 10 from uh, series one because the grid style boxes only consist of the first 18. And then they make the other 10 like later at the end. Of, it's a weird thing. And then they're like on to Laser Beast right after that. So absolutely, it's weird. I kind of wish they had them all the first 28 in that grid style Autobots 
and Decepticons. Cause that would be really cool. It's like turtle brick style on that one there. It would be awesome to like have, but here we are at the end, numbers 25 through 28, although you can see only one two-pack sitting on this table as I am missing Bloodthirsty Bison and Bighorn Sheep, number 25 and 26 in consecutive numbers. If you would have that two-pack, there's only two two-packs I'm missing to complete my consecutive run of the first 28 from Series 1. If you guys do remember, it was going to be Rhino and Fox, as well as Bison and Big Horn is who I am missing, and that'll be it. So definitely on the hunt for those ones. If you guys are looking for variants for these figures, not so much. Big Horn is awesome. I always loved him, though. He's one of the cool characters. Obviously, he's right there. He does look different as he has his tech. Uh, this is his protective mouth guard on there. He wanted to show off his snout in the picture, so he was like, yo, this is picture day. I'm not wearing that. Pedro Pascal style on that one. So I'm definitely missing those characters. And into the last two figures of the line for series one. Definitely one of my favorite two packs of the entire line because it has some of my favorite figures of the entire line. And we are talking about numbers 28 and 27. That is right. They are incorrect, again out of order, but we're talking about Krusty Krab and Web Slinger Spider. The vision for Spongebob, uh, where the name came from, was from this character. That is not true at all, but I always love Krusty Krab or Crab Hit in Japan. Again, I forgot to tell you the names of these ones, but these names are all amazing. The Spider has one of the best names in the whole line. Web Slinger Spider becomes Death Spider. Uh, I forgot Bloodthirsty Bison is going to be Gray Ox. And we got Bighorn Sheep turning into Bomb Sheep. All these names, like I said, amazing. They're like either call signs for fighter pilots or like call signs for like gamers, for sure. Yo, we got bomb sheep down, five degrees north. Death spider on the way. I gotcha. Gray ox, I'm up top. What, what, what are we doing? What am I doing? Jesus. But the names are really, really awesome. And the spider is one of my favorite figures in, in it. Like when I was a kid, I was playing the crap out of this figure. He was in all my wars. I should have got mines out. But he's in the other box. He's all messed up. He's missing his like rub sign. I also do not have... Uh, the Japanese boxes as you can see for these they would have also come out in the tropical style G box Although when we're getting into crusty crab or crab hit you're gonna have one of the the best Variants in the line as well and since we showed off pink weasel in the last one This is the figure that I was talking about you're going to have pink crab right there You got the two pinks you have here. This is the original one I will say on both these ones that are pink you do have a lot stiffer on the legs These are a lot more gummier. They're not like crazy But there's definitely like a stiffer feel to them in your hand textile wise So there you go there you got the crab and then the crab as we saw with this you would have probably got them in the North American American release in the bighorn sheep with the crab you're going to get him in the north american release of the deer stalker chariot right here and what we do have inside is our little crab hit ride and shotgun and the deer stalker very, very nice i like that pink and that green popping real nice on that clean card also really fun to see since we're showing off the japanese boxes in the commercial they did say that they had planned the first collect all 84. So who was the 84 figures? It ends with Fly Sailor number 84, the beginning, well, basically almost the end of the uh, first Laser Beast that were released in North America. They didn't even finish the line. But I guess in their head when they made the commercial, they were ending it on the fish. Number 84, Fly Sailor. That's uh, so funny that that was the one that they chose for it there. But... Need to get the boxes, need to get those two packs, definitely for sure. And if you guys have any, uh, are out there, have watched this, you want to get rid of them, have them hiding in the closet, you got any of these boxes, Decepticon, Autobots, we got the Green Grid, we got the Tropical, I need them all, because I need to complete these ones I'm missing. So, hey, hit me up if you got them out there. That would be amazing to finally get a whole set of those. So I wanted to show off Probably my favorite piece in my entire Battle Beast collection. We're talking about the Beast de Combate, the Spanish card version of Krusty Krab and Death Spider. Uh, this was like my grail for so long. 
two, if not my favorite figures in the entire line on a Spanish card, which did release the first series. I know in Spain as well, they gave us 28 figures. And not only did they give us the first 28 figures, but they gave them to us in the most unique color combinations that you could have gotten throughout the line. I've spoken about them throughout different, uh, the most eye-catching colors that they did do came from Spain. But uh, here we're checking out Def Spider looking nice and lavender on his purple. He smells fresh as a flower mixed with crab hit nice and brown always like his colors he looks really good in hand as well obviously these ones are a slighter shade anytime i can get a bdc for short figure whether loose or on card i am going to be a happy camper and until i get the grail of grails for my collection the white leo and deer stalker on the beast of the Cabate two pack mock I'm done after that. You can take me from this place after that, but it is very, very hard to find. Very rare and very, very expensive. I only know one person who ever had one, and he wouldn't budge on ever getting rid of it. So hopefully one day. But the fun thing about the Beast de, de Combate cards, just like the US card, they do have the same look to them. Obviously, the car artwork, besides the language, is going to look the same. Besides the fact that they did turn that shit up to 100 on brightness or saturation, you can see right here. I mean, look at the whites. It's like so white. These guys are in the shade. These guys are in the sun. They're getting too hot. This card is too hot. Oh, don't touch it. Don't even look at it as too much. Absolutely love it. We got the Starburst on the top. Just bringing even more excitement to it. I don't know what it says. Maybe Army Secret. Maybe Collect Your Secret Army. I'm not really sure on that. But one of the things about the BCA Kabate cards. The backing is the same besides being in a different language. Just like the other ones we've shown off. But. They did use a lower quality glue when making those cards over there, so they are very prone to either missing the backing or it coming off. I was fortunate enough to have one that does have the backing, although the glue has come off on that as well. You can kind of see a nice uh, brown skeleton on the back, but the fact to have the card back on it, have it unpunched still, is rare enough and so, so cool to have. I only hope to be able to add more BDC Beasts. Uh, to the collection whether loose or on car back one day until I finally do get that white Leo and deer stalker But as we shown off today, we have the Beastie de Combate, the Spanish car We shown off the Comba de Move, the French Canadian car and we showed off the Le Droganut uh, The French card as well as the Japanese ones uh, with no Obviously, we have the kanji, but we don't have any cool names because anytime they got the language, it's always really, really amazing. Obviously, I'm butchering all these names. Like I said, Beast de Combate, BDC for short. This one I always called the Cobra card because this is Kumba, and I always just miss that. So that's the Cobra card. And we got the Le Dragonut, which is just a dragon card for me because I know I can't say that word for shit. So dragon card, Cobra card, and the bdc card very very nice i need that italian one day one day it might pop up in my stocking please santa so thank you guys for watching this long video and thank you so much again to beastformers for his wealth of knowledge and help with this project please guys go check him out beastformers.blog uh he's, he's the man he's the goat he's a stud the scholar of all things Battle Beast. Thank you so much, Beast Formers, for helping me be able to bring the most up to date information I can to you guys. We're definitely going to send another shout out to Battle Beast Redux. We've showed them off. If you guys want to see some other Battle Beast content, please check out some of the other videos where we did do a full tap into this amazing creator. He did his newest piece to come out, was a limited quartz snail that we're seeing here and it is absolutely beautiful even the weapon nice and clear like i said please go check back one of the uh latest videos that we recently had come out with we showed off all of his amazing wares and we do have the normal version of the snail that was released that we did show off this is the new quartz snail playing homage to the old school japanese premiums clear carp and clear gator uh, we will talk about them on later episodes, but this figure is so amazing. It shines, the light just goes through. It's so, so cool. Even better in the sunlight, you can see through the damn thing. I don't know how he did it. It looks so 
amazing thank you so much battle beast redo please go check him out on instagram you guys want to add to the original battle beast collection these guys fit in absolutely wonderfully they look like they came as part of the collection and is continuing on and that animal kingdom the battle for supremacy please go check out any of these instagrammers their collections like i said are amazing and lastly i did go down to the creek to find and snap these elusive creatures in the wild so please enjoy and as we go over these pictures guys uh, thank you guys so much again for watching this video. I hope that this knowledge does help. There was never anything I could find online or on YouTube to really explain the line and get your dip your toe into it. So I hope that this is comprehensive enough to give you an idea of where to start or help you on journey. Any uh, any hope that it does help you along this crazy battle beast rabbit hole. Good luck to you. I did a lot of work on this, so please hit that like button and stay tuned for future series deep dives into all the stuff faced by battle beasts um guys i'll see you on the next one to all my warriors out there peace